hello guys once again welcome back to another android app development tutorial in this video here i'm going to show you how to use observable objects in android data binding you can make objects observable so that when objects properties changes it will automatically update the user interface so here i already create an android studio project i already enabled data binding for this project So this is the layout of this project here we can display first name last name user can update first name last name using these two edit text so in this project we have two layout activity main.xml and content main.xml i enabled data binding for these two layouts so first we can create a pojo class for this project so i close all these layouts create a new class here I name it as user here I create two variables first name and last name now I'm going to create getter methods for getter and setter methods for these two variables So here I create getter and setter methods for these two variables. So I'm going to make objects of this class observable. For that, first you have to extends base observable. Base observable is a class that available in data binding API. Okay. So in order to make these objects observable, the first step you have to add a bindable annotation to the getter methods and you have to call you have to call a method called the notify property changed from the setter methods so these are the getter methods get the last name and get first name so you have to call you have to use an annotation called the at bindable use this annotation for the getter methods so now from the setter methods you have to call a method called uh, notify property change so here you have to use a class called br this is automatically generated class by data binding and here this is first name yeah you have to rebuild this project again so I rebuild it okay project successfully rebuilt okay so you have to call the same method from the uh, last name getter methods sorry setter methods here it is last name so now this class object is observable okay so now we can update the user interface so open content main.xml so first here I am going to create a variable variable name specify the variable name Here I specify the variable name as user. Now specify the variable type. Okay. Now we can set the first name and last name. So you can display the first name using this text view. So here I'm going to use the data binding expression language. Here we can display first name. Now we can display last name. Okay. So now we need to use the same variable inside the parent layout. 
open activity main.xml we have to use the same variable here also now we need to pass this uh, variable user to the content main.xml so bind user equal to user okay now go to main activity class file activity main binding that is the data binding class name yeah we have to rebuild this project again activity main binding here I name it as binding uh, data binding util dot set content view here it is activity main okay so we have a application bar in that layout so binding dot so you can simply call this method set support action bar into binding dot uh, my toolbar okay uh, now create a variable for the pojo class called the user so we can set first name and last name set first name first name into prabish now i'm going to set last name Okay, now we can set the user. So binding dot set the user and pass the user object. So now we can test this project. So actually this variable we didn't initialize that one. So user equal to new user. Okay, so I run the project. okay so now here the first name and last name displayed using these two text views so here the user object is observable so whenever uh, whenever the properties uh, of this object changes it will automatically update the user interface so that is the next thing we need to do so for handle the button click actions here I am going to create a class here I name it as click handler so here I create some edit text variable f name first name l name last name now create a constructor for this class now edit text f name edit text last name initialize that variable from the constructor okay so for handle the button click here I'm going to create another method I name it as update user So here, by using the user object, we can call the setter method. So set first name. So f name dot the text to string. So user dot set last name. And here it is last name. Get text and convert into string. 
Okay. So this is the click handler. So now we can implement that click handler in the layout. So here create some variable. I name it as click handler. Now specify the variable type. Here that class available inside main activity click handler. Okay. So now we can specify the on click method for the button. So and throw it on click. Now here we can use the expression language. So click handler. Now we can call the uh, method. So you have to use the same method signature. So here it is update user. Okay. So now you need to use the same variable inside the parent layout. So here I use the same variable inside the parent layout also. Okay. So now we can initialize the click handler. So click handler equal to uh, new click handler. So for this method you have to pass two parameter uh, that is uh, objects of two edit text. Okay. So handler here it is uh, binding dot content dot uh, txt first name. So here is the content is the id used for the included layout. So here is the id, content is the id for the included layout and I will show you the ids of the edit text. Here the edit text ids are txt first name and txt last name. So now we get we have to pass the last name. So binding dot content dot uh, txt last name. Okay. So now we can set the click, click handler. So binding dot set click handler and pass the click handler. So now we can test the project. So run the project. Okay, now we can try to update the name. And try to update it. It will not work. So here we made a mistake. So here you have to call that ID of the included layout content. Okay. So now we can test it again. So before going to test it, here I am going to uh, reset that edit text soon after the user update name. So f name dot set the text into null and name dot set the text. Okay. Now we can test it again. So I run it again. Now we can update. So now, now uh, we successfully update first name and last name. So here whenever the object property changes it will automatically update the user interface. So this is how we use uh, data observable objects in Android data binding. I hope you understand the concept. For getting more Android tutorial updates, please subscribe this channel now. Thank you for watching. See you in the next episode.